evening for this wonderful toastmasters meeting as the acting to acting surgeon in arms for today's meeting i like to welcome all of you to this very first session joint session of tcs grandeur toastmasters club and t and uh, chalk industry club so it's a unique club i got to know about from one of my common friends uh my wife is uh, known to meena ji and she told me that she is also part of a toastmaster club i thought why not to have a joint meeting so here we are having this meeting together so as a sanjay and arms i would like to iterate few ground rules that we should be following during this meeting be on mute except when you are speaking and uh, before you start speaking please unmute yourself once you are there on the podium do not use am i audible of course once you are not audible we will let you know please switch on uh, keep your phone on silent so that's the best thing to do right now and ensure that you clap and upload i uh, on mute until unless we are unmuting all of us and there is an instruction for all of us to unmute and clap and then uh, the most important part is ensure that you avoid speaking on these three taboo topics sex religion and politics in a derogatory manner you're free to use in a positive way but in a derogatory manner i would suggest you to avoid that now with that i would like to invite someone on the podium who is the acting president from chalk industries toastmasters club he has been this he has been with tcs for several years currently playing the role of an assistant consultant and vp education tcs mathri club and chalk industries club so no one none other than toastmaster raj bharat on the podium toastmaster bharat the podium is all yours thank you so much toastmaster jagmohan for your warm welcome and warm greeting and uh, thanks a lot for this offering to have a joint meeting between tcs mathic and your toastmasters club of district 124 gurgaon delhi and chalk industry toastmasters club mumbai district 98 it is a great togetherness for toastmasters community which we always celebrate of togetherness and just networking connecting with each other and having a great togetherness for great meeting welcome everyone good evening we are ready to help to develop our skills of communication and leadership with another great meeting of joint meeting we can say today as in the toastmasters we develop our skills of communication and leadership together and we are there today with every one of us before beginning to before begin today uh, i would like to invite few guests who are joining us today so anyone who are joining very first time today as toastmaster would you like to introduce yourself i would like to invite yeah yeah hi everyone uh, i'm ashutosh i'm from tcs thank you Hi Asutosh, welcome to this meeting. Great to have you here. Ah, uh, future Toastmaster Ishtara. Hi everyone. I'm a regular guest in this club. Looking forward to join as member soon in 2023. Thank you. Great, amazing, amazing Toastmaster Ishtara. so with this uh, let's invite toastmaster of the day toastmaster sanchari who is with tata consultancy services since 5 plus years and still has a hobby of traveling reading enjoying and procrastinating too so with huge round of applause let's invite toastmaster sanchari over to you toastmaster sanchari thank you team raj and please keep uh, keep the applause going on for team raj thank you for giving such a warm welcome and here i am with my theme which is mainly on which i am a master procrastinator so let me start with sharing my screen at first okay is my screen visible Yes, it is. 
All right. So I would like to start with a question that how many of you are a procrastinator? Anybody who want to uh, yeah, raise your hand? I can see TM Raj is raising his hand. Anybody else? Okay, I can see TM Jack Mohan. I can see TM Imran. That's great. We have a lot of procrastinator with us today. So who is a procrastinator? So a procrastinator is one who will procrastinate unnecessarily and voluntarily, and he will delay and postpone something despite knowing that there will be negative consequences for doing so. So I guess we all of we all have gone through the days when we are in college or we are in um, some important space of life where it was very much important for us to do a task, but we kept procrastinating it because we thought that we are very, very uh, pro at it and we can do it at the very end. And that is why I like to call myself also a master procrastinator. Although I procrastinate, I think I am a master of it and I can just get the task done at the very end also. Now with procrastination, there comes a lot of consequences as well, which I will uh, take you through at the very end. But right now, without any further procrastination, I will ask, uh, I will introduce our general evaluator for the day. Before that, I will just give the, uh, I will give the brief of the sections today that we are going to have. At the very beginning, we have the prepared speech section where we are going to have the prepared speakers who will give their speech. The speech will be generally five to seven minutes. And after that, we'll have our table topic section where we are going to have impromptu talks on different topics. And after that, we are going to have the general evaluation section where our general evaluator will evaluate each and every uh, participant in this Toastmaster section. So without any further delay, I'm going to introduce our general evaluator for today, who is TM Ravinder. And I'm pretty sure she's, uh, she's not a procrastinator because she has written three books in her life till now. She is a homemaker, she is a YouTuber, she is a blogger, and obviously her favorite quote is that she believes that life is just like an ice cream, so enjoy it before it melts. So without any further introduction, I am asking TM uh, Ravinder to come to the podium. Big round of applause for TM Ravinder. Thank you. Thank you so much, Postmaster of the Days, TM Sanchari, for introducing me wonderfully. Yeah, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon to all the beautiful souls who are connecting from the different time zones of our beautiful worlds. For the benefits of our guest, I am the general evaluator of today's meeting, today's joint meeting of TMG, TC, and Chalk Industry. I will evaluate all the speakers, evaluator, and role player. So starting with the timer, let's welcome Toastmaster Danish, the timer for today's meeting. Thank you, General. Over to you, Toastmaster Danish. Thank you, General Evaluator. So hi, hi everyone. My name is Danish Soma. Today, I will play the role of timer. As a timer, I'm, I'm responsible for keeping track of the time throughout the session. I will I will show green card when the for the prepared speakers, I will show the green card. When the, when, the target, when the speaker hit the minimum specified time, I will show the yellow card when speaker hit the target time and show the red card when speaker hit the maximum qualified time. And there is also grace period 30 seconds on either side of the time, on the side of the time. So thanks and back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you. Thank you so much, Danish. After Danish, let's welcome Toastmaster Imran the R counter for today's meeting. So over to you, Toastmaster Imran. Thank you, General Evaluator, Toastmaster Rabinder Kar. Good evening, my dear fellow Toastmaster and dear guests. This is Toastmaster Imran from Dhaka, Bangladesh. As a R counter today, I'm going to note the sounds and words that are used as a crash or post filler by anyone who speaks. During the meeting, I listen for words and keep account of inappropriate expressions, such as, well, so, you know, 
and sound like uh, um, R. I'll also note when a speaker repeats a word or phrase, such as I, I, or this means, this means. It is known as a double crutch. And I will present my report as well as I will share with you all. When called up, over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you. Thank you so much, Imran. So after Imran, let's welcome Toastmaster Ketan, the grammarian of our today's meeting. I hope he will explain the word of the day as well as the phrase of the day for today's meeting. Over to you, Toastmaster Ketan. Toastmaster Ketan has been replaced by Toastmaster Smita. She would be the grammarian. Okay. Okay, thank you. Over to you, Smita. Toastmaster Smita. Thank you, Toastmaster Ravinder Kaur. Uh, good evening, dear fellow Toastmasters and all the guests. I'm Smita, and uh, today I'm playing the role of grammarian. And as part of this role, my attention is my uh, attention throughout the meeting will be towards the good usage of English and also not so good usage. I will also present my report on this whenever uh, GE asks for it. In addition to that, I am also responsible to provide a word of the day. So the word of the day today is perceptible. And the meaning is able to be seen or noticed. The usage of this will be like so. There was a perceptible change in the audience's mood during the scary parts of the otherwise comedy movie. I will also paste this in the chat window for a quick reference. And I will also encourage all the speakers to use this word of the day during their speech. And whenever a speaker does so, I also request all the audience to give a round of applause and encourage them. With that, I wish all the speakers a very good luck. Over to you, Madam. Ravinder Kaur. Okay. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Smita, being a grammarian as a perceptible change was required there. <laughs> so after this, there is a listening master that is also Toastmaster Smita. <laughs> so over to you again. Yeah, as the listening master, I will be listening to all the speeches, just like all the audience. And uh, be ready for, listen to them carefully and be ready for a round of maybe question answer session. Good luck to everyone. Over to you, madam. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Smita. Thank you. Thank you everyone, all the role players and best of luck to all of you. So uh, let's start the meeting. Uh, now over to you, the Toastmaster Sinchari to proceed. Uh, Thank you, Tim Ravinder. So coming back to our theme, let me go to the next slide now. So you can see here a typical timeline that is being followed by a procrastinator. At the very beginning, we can say that when the when can see that when the deadline is set. When you can see that the deadline is set. For example, there are two weeks until the assignment is due. Then we have a false sense of security that the, there is plenty of time and we will be able to do it before the time. Then as the time passes, we start procrastinating a little bit less and uh, focusing on the task in hand more. So what we will say to us is that I will get started. I will only work well under the pressure. Now, as the time passes more, and the panic and stress started stay setting in, we finally realized that, oh no, the assignment is due tomorrow and we don't have any time left to do it. So how this particular timeline creates, uh, you can say creates panic in us or how we uh, settle in with this particular timeline. Before that, I would like to go through the reasons of procrastination. Why do we procrastinate? 
The first thing can be difficulty in understanding. It happens a lot that when we can't understand a project in hand, we tend to procrastinate because we think that if we are going through it, it is going to be difficult, and it's better to avoid it at the till the very last meaning, uh, till the very last time. The next thing is obviously time consuming. The more you have a work which is time consuming, you will procrastinate it more because you'll think that it will take a lot of time and effort, and it's better to avoid it. Then there is lack of knowledge. When you are not sure of the task in hand, how you can handle it, how you can uh, work through it, and therefore you procrastinate it. And obviously the last but not the least is the fear of failure. We all go through it. We think that if we are going to do something unknown, something time consuming, and at the same time, something difficult, we might fail. And this fear of failure keeps us at the bay and we don't really want to sail through the procrastinator habit. You can see the procrastination cycle is here. At first we procrastinate, then we feel guilty, then we panic, then we make excuse, excuses, and then again we procrastinate. Now I'll go through the uh, cure of procrastination you can say in, the, in the next slides, but before that, I would like to start our prepared speech section today. In our prepared speech section, we have two speakers today. today and uh, the prepared speech section is going to be for five to seven minutes. Before giving further introduction on the prepared speech, I'd like to ask the evaluator uh, to introduce himself. Um, but at first, I'd like to ask TM Jagmohan because TM Shagar is being late. So if he can take up the evaluator one, and at the same time, if TM Monoj uh, can take up the speaker one, is it fine, TM Monoj? Yes, I can take on. Thank you, thank you, TM Monoj. So uh, yeah, I would. I already introduced our evaluator one, but again, let me give a, a good introduction of him. So uh, Tim Jagmohan is uh, a very, very popular Toastmaster in our club and all the clubs, the clubs across. He is the most active member in our club. And uh, without any further delay, I would like to ask him to introduce our speaker for the day. Hey, <coughs> thank you, Toast, thank you, Toastmaster Sanchari, for this uh, quick introduction. So our speaker today would be delivering a speech from Level Three, Project Three, Pathways Motivational Strategy, and the objective, let me read out the objectives. The purpose of the project is for member to cultivate an understanding of how his or her emotion impact relationships. Thank you and over to you, Toastmaster of the day. And the duration of the speech, let me share is five to seven minutes. Thank you, Tim Jagmohan. Now let me introduce our speaker for the day, Tim Monoj. Tim Monoj joined Team Fraternity in 2016 in Dehradun, then he moved to Kota, Rajasthan, and he was founder member of First Club in Kota. Then he moved to Chennai, where he was part of two TM clubs. Currently, he is at Pachmari uh, and has joined CND. He is a 54 years young working professional with Government of India. I'd like to give a big round of applause for TM Monoj and uh, let us go to the prepared speech section now. The podium is yours, TM Monoj. Thank you, TM Modi. My deepest gratitude to each one of you for being the perceptible audience this hour. Wish you all happiness and bliss in abundance. The intelligence here have been talking about IQ. IQ stands for intelligent quotient. Now, this term became quite popular in 90s, 1912 to be specific. A psychologist European psychologist William Stern coined this term. And this became so very popular. Everybody wanted their kids between the World War I and World War II to be become as intelligent as Einstein the Great, minus the curly hairs. Or Stephen Hawking, without that specialized design chair. So this went on till 1950s when people started talking about emotional intelligence. This concept again became quite concretized with William Coleman writing and publishing a book named Emotional Intelligence in 1995. So this course, but why talk about emotions? What is the importance of emotions? 
Now, let me simplify it further. Emotion. If I have to define emotion, it will be E plus motion. E stands for energy and motion, the motion of our thoughts. Certain thoughts, when you concentrate on those thoughts, they become energized and become emotions. Is it making sense like falling in love? You look at somebody, you like it. But when you fall in love, those thoughts get energized and they become emotions. Now, why emotions? Because it is the bedrock of my existence, your existence, the existence of the whole humanity. Without emotions, there won't be any creation. Eve and Adam, Eve and Yang, a woman and a man, make emotional contact to facilitate the growth of human race. Interestingly, the subtle language of emotion is universal. Your emotion, my emotion, the whole humanity's emotion is universal. We all have felt expressions of love, anger, hate and disgust. But this differs, the degree of emotions differ from person to person. Emotion again, has its own positive emotions and negative emotions. Everything else is positive and antithesis of that. And our happiness depends on how we use intelligently these emotions, how we harbor and nurture these emotions. The emotions are universal. The intensity of the feelings, as I told you earlier, differs. And if the emotions are unchecked, if the emotions break the dam, then there is catastrophe. The emotion of love, unchecked, getting into lust, can go on to create rape. The emotions of anger, if unchecked, then it can cause murder. And the emotion of ego, in the mind of a statesman can cause a war like whatever is happening between Russia and Ukraine. Our intelligence is shaped by our education, our parentage, our upbringing, our cultural background, and so many other factors. So far, we have discussed, and I hope we have understood what those two terms, emotion and intelligence. When you fuse them together, we get this much discussed concept of emotional intelligence. In simpler language, by regulating and channelizing our emotions, by our intelligence, we become emotionally intelligent persons. Let's take a concrete example. A woman and a man, the basic building block of the complete society, the humanity. They are bonded emotionally, regulate and channelize their emotions to propagate and populate and make a family. And they become the edifice of this grand edifice called society. To share with you my story, I, the Adam, got wedded to my Eve, a woman. 25 years back, it was an arranged marriage, rattled in the rat race of bread and butter, position and fame. I hardly had time to understand. It was like, I'm taking care of her, I'm providing. I took, took her for granted. And this went on. I could never understand her. And I never took a pause to understand. Is she happy? It was always expecting she should understand me. And even it went on while taking her for a walk, I used to stare at people, stare at other women and say, see how beautiful she is. Never realizing if she remarks, 
look at that man how handsome he is how it feels so is this my unique story or it is a story of most husbands getting into this trap with passage of time i realized it is true marriages are made in heaven i have realized she was the perfect partner for me this was achieved by taking a pause on the rat race and getting the shoes of my partner a few years back i came across this south african term called ubuntu roughly translates as i am because we are i should change to we that all problems and narrow mindedness get resolved it's a concept of acceptance of others as they are so this feeling of selflessness and empathy will become natural if we remind us now and then our existence is flimsy we are all mortal so friends let's practice the principles of ubuntu to be emotionally intelligent and remain happy blissful and spread it all around thank you a big round of applause for tm monoj for this wonderful speech and now i would like to call upon the podium our next evaluator tm sagar tm sagar the podium is yours thank you so much toastmaster sanchari now the speaker for today will be delivering a speech from pathways effective coaching level 2 the project name is introduction to toastmasters mentoring the objective of the project is for the member to clearly define how toastmasters envisions mentoring the purpose of this particular speech is for the member to share some aspect of a previous experience as a protege timer please note that the timing for the speech is 5 to 7 minutes i wish all the best to our speaker and back to our toastmaster of the day toastmaster sanjay thank you team sagar for this wonderful introduction now let us call upon on the stage our speaker second speaker for the day tm pradeep he is a mindset coach from bangalore he is also student public speaking coach he is working for a us based victoria secret company in networking team so without any further introduction please let us call tm pradeep with his speech thank you the podium is yours tm pradeep i to my sanchari what's the speech title just a second igniting lamps yes igniting lamps thank you team uh, pradeep igniting lamps team pradeep igniting lamps thank you when one person mentors two lives are changed good evening to all my fellow toastmasters and future toastmasters igniting lamps i came across a great personality in 2019 I came across this personality whom I called later as King Solomon. The reason being he conquered my heart. I met this person in 2019 very humble very down to earth and easily approachable. I loved him for his humbleness. He was very humble, very down to earth. and very great personality i met him personally and i told him i need two help from your end one is to develop my communication skills and second is to increase my confidence level but at that time in 2019 i was i was nowhere near toastmasters or any personality development i said to him that can you help me with training and coaching and getting me with good communication skills my dear friends he was my first mentor in my life and he was working for ccd which we normally call as the cave coffee day in bangalore they have a good network of coffee shops in bangalore and also outside he was a trainer an assistant trainer in that company 
I used to regularly meet him at a place called Global Village, which is a few kilometers from my place. And the reason we met there because he used to stay nearby to this place. There was a coffee shop, the CCD, that is the uh, Cave Coffee Day at that place. And we used to meet regularly every two to three weeks. He used to give me a lot of you know, thoughts as a mentor. Pradeep, you need to do this. You need to work on your body language. You need to work on your speaking. You need to work on your voice modulation. And I used to work on it, but not that. But I used to always get heard whenever he used to give me a feedback you know, a little bit of ego that was always there. And I would, I would never like his direct feedback. It used to pinch me on my heart directly, just like throwing an arrow. But I could see that he was perceptible. He could see, which I couldn't, I couldn't see from my physical eyes. One fine day, he told me, Pradeep, let's meet at the Cave Coffee Day. And I said, sure. I parked my car just opposite to the Cave Coffee Day at the Global Village in the opposite side. It was raining, it was drizzling. And I was always, as usual, I was late for five to 10 minutes due to the rainy season at that time. And I parked my car and I started walking to him. And I said, hello, sir, how are you doing? He used to call me Pradeep, sir. And I used to call him, uh, Solomon, sir, and that's how we used to interact. He told me, Pradeep, your confidence level has increased. I said, what? My confidence level has increased? We haven't met for last three weeks. We haven't spoken for last three weeks apart from the WhatsApp chit chat. And you said, my confidence level has increased? He told me, Pradeep, the way you walked towards me, I immediately judged that you are working on yourself and you are going to reach places. Yes, my dear friends. He told me the exact word, the six letter word. He said, Pradeep, sir, you are going to go places. I thought, yeah, maybe a year back I went to Dubai. Maybe in the future I might go to some other place. But I thought, okay, maybe somewhere. The second thing what he told me was, always work on yourself. I used to be a complainer, even today, sometimes I am a complainer saying that's not right, this is not right, but I get that thing so down, a little bit down, but right now I'm working on this. And he told me, never complain. And he said, Pradeep, work on your own self. Don't mind what other people say, right, about you. Like one of my Maharashtran friend, he told me, Pradeep, that means it's a Marathi language being said, Pradeep, you will never be able to speak because I am an introvert, a spiritual person. You will never be able to speak. I said, I'm going to make it. And I'm, I, I worked on myself. I developed my confidence. And the third word which he said was, Pradeep, due to your availability, I, could, I can see you on social media on all the places and the way you are conducting your Zoom online and everything, you're following my instruction. He told to me that Pradeep, you are changing my life. My dear friends, a mentor telling you that you are changing my life, that meant a lot to me. I, I thought, oh my God, it's really great. Until then, up to May 21, I wasn't continuously connecting with him. And he took me from zero to maybe a point of 50 and above. But after May 2021, I lost connectivity with him. I used to do a text message. He never used to respond. I used to send him emails. He never used to respond. And finally, 2022 September, through a common friend whom we met in 2019, that common friend called me. Pradeep, do you know that? I said, what? He told me, Solomon is no more. Oh my God. I was uh, you know, bursting into tears. Even right now, I have the goose pump over here. And I said, I love that person. I, you know, I appreciated whatever he has done for me. For a very small amount, I could 
I used to pay for me, maybe for, you can just get a cup of coffee because I couldn't afford in 2019. And he has given me so much and God almighty, why have you taken this person? My question to all of you, my dear friends, have you been in a situation wherein the person whom you loved a lot, you trusted a lot, he suddenly disappears from your life? It just like moving the earth below your feet and you are nowhere and thinking, my God, why is this happening to me? Why me? People in the motivational world, they say, try me. But I, I said, why me? He was helping me in every stage. I did not have money to pay to a mentor or so. He helped me so much. And why me? I was frustrated. I was just going to bang many things and it used to happen many times. I was frustrated. And later I came to know that anywhere, wherever he is, but his three words, which he told me that Pradeep, you're going to go places. I stick to it. The second thing he said, work on your own self first and don't think what other people will tell about you. I started working on it. And the third thing, what he said, very important is that Pradeep, you are changing my life. That touched me in my heart, deep inside my heart. Even today I'm carrying it. And I told them, I promised mentally, you know, we started with just a, with a cup of coffee. It's being said, right? Everything begins with a coffee and with the cough, coffee day. I said, one day, one day, by 2026, 30th of you know, June, I'll be one of the top most speakers on this planet. I just committed to myself. I, I thought to myself, and even today, whenever I get up, I get to the Toastmasters or whatever I do, this, my speaking thing, I'm so thankful to this person who was perceptible, he could understand, he noticed the change coming in me from within, from somewhere, and just through my body language, that one incident, it struck me and into my subconscious and, and changed my life. So he was like an igniting lamp for me, my dear friends. So when one person mentors, two lives are changed. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you. It was a great speech from Team Pradeep. Thank you so much, Team Pradeep, for sharing your life's inspiration with us. Now, let us go back to the theme and let me share my screen. All right, I believe that earlier I was not being able to show the screen. So these were the reasons of procrastination. Why do we procrastinate? And the cycle of procrastination. Now, before going to how to overcome procrastination, I would like to tell you the reason why I came up with the theme. Six months ago, I went through a TikTok video, which inspired me, and I started working on this theme, but I procrastinated, obviously, and it took me six months to finally complete this theme. So I would like to take you through the video at first and show you how procrastination does work. All right, is my screen visible? Okay. This is a very famous speech by Team Urban about the master procrastinator. From college, I was a government major, which means I had to write a lot of papers. Now, when a normal student writes a paper, they might spread the work out a little like this. So, you know, you get started maybe a little slowly, but you get enough done in the first week that some heavier days later on, everything gets done and things stay civil. And I would want to do that like that. That would be the plan. I would uh, I would have it all ready to go, but then, then, then actually the paper would come along and then I would kind of do this. And that would happen every single paper. But then came my 90-page senior thesis paper you're supposed to spend a year on. I knew for a paper like that, my normal workflow, it's not an option and it was way too big a project. So I planned things out and I decided it kind of had to go something like this. This is how the year would go. So I'd start off light and I'd bump it up in the middle months. And then at the end, I would kick it up into high gears, like a little staircase. How hard can it just walk up the stairs? 
No big deal, right? But then funniest thing happened. Those first few months, they came and went, and I, I couldn't quite do stuff. So we had an awesome new revised plan. And then the middle month actually went by, and I didn't really write words. And so we were here. And then two months turned into one month, turned into two weeks. And one day I woke up with three days until the deadline, still not having written a word. And so I did the only thing I could. I wrote 90 pages over 72 hours, pulling not one, but two all-nighters. Humans are not supposed to pull two all-nighters. Sprinted across campus, dove in slow motion, and got it in just at the deadline. I thought that was the end of everything. But a week later, I get a call. It's the school. And they said, I'm really sorry. I guess the video got paused somehow. Just a second. Revised plan. Then this little month actually went by, and I didn't really write words. And so we were here. And then two months turned into one month, turned into two weeks. One day I woke up with three days until the deadline, still not having written a word. And so I did the only thing I could. I wrote 90 pages over 72 hours, pulling not one, but two all-nighters. Humans are not supposed to pull two all-nighters. Sprinted across campus, dove in slow motion, and got it in just at the deadline. I thought that was the end of everything. But a week later, I get a call. It's the school. And they say, is this Tim Urban? And I say, yeah. And they say, we need to talk about your thesis. I say, OK. And they say, best one we've ever seen. <laughs> that did not happen. It was a very, very bad thesis. I just wanted to enjoy that one moment when all of you thought this guy is amazing. <laughs> no, no, it was very, very bad. Hey, if you're planning to write the GRE exam, you need to listen to this. Do you know that spending just one hour on a daily All right, now coming back to our team, am I audible? Okay. Thank you. So why would I take you through this video? I know there was a lot of ups and downs while I was playing the video, but the, uh, starting, as you can see in this video, uh, Tim Urban, he was in college and he was procrastinating a lot while there was an assignment. And at the very end, he has to do the assignment. And it was terrible. That happens with all of us. When we procrastinate, we come up with something, but it's not everything that we need to do. So how to overcome procrastination? All right, my screen is visible, right? Yes. Okay, so overcoming procrastination can be done by following these four steps. At first, you need to diagnose the fear factors. What are the fear that you are that keeping you at the bay from doing the work? Then you need to do a SWOT analysis. Now, what is a SWOT analysis? A SWOT analysis is where you go through your strength, your weakness, and what are the... Uh, drawback that you are facing in those and you need to work on them to finally come up with a plan. Next thing that you need to do is rooting back to your values. You need to connect your values. Why are you doing the work? Why? What it will going to bring in your life? How it is important to you? The more you will ask the valuable questions to yourself, the more you will root to the work to be done. Then obviously the last is discipline and time management. You need to be disciplined. The more you are going to uh, give the time to your project in hand, the more you are going to managing the time, the more it is going to be done at a particular time of moment. 
So let us keep the further theme for the later discussion. Now I would like to uh, go for the table topic section, which is the second section of our session today. And for that, I would like to introduce our table topic speaker of the day. So our table topic speaker for the day is TM Ashok, who is a retired mechanical engineer who was associated with Aditya Birla Group. He is currently working as a consultant for quality systems. He is a singer, script writer, actor, passionate about theater art. He has made some ad films as well. He has been a Toastmaster for one year and he is a charter member of Chalk and Duster Toastmaster Club. I would like to now hand over the podium to TM, uh, to Table Topic Master TM Ashok for the further presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sinchari, for your kind words. Uh, in fact, I had to start. I'm audible. I'm audible. Oh, I can, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. okay. Thank you, Toastmaster Sinchari, for your kind words. In fact, I had to start at 9.42 and I'm starting at 9.51 now. So uh, within 15 minutes, I'll have to wind up my table topic sessions. So still, I hope that uh, we'll be able to take, take up at least three or four table topics. Now, friends, table topic discussions. Why, why we practice impromptu speeches, impromptu speaking? Anyone? To sound smart. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. See, it, it gives us an opportunity to develop our four communication skills. One is listening, thinking, reorganizing the thoughts, and delivering. So I have selected few topics for the practice today. And uh, I hope that your enthusiasm in participating would be quite perceptible. I would like to see that. So are you ready? But before that, may I request a timer, TM Danish, to say a few words about the time limits of the speakers. May he reiterate it at maybe 30 seconds. Thank you, table topic master. So for a for a table topic speaking, so I will show the green card when speaker hit the minimum time that is one minute. I will show the ye yellow card when speaker hit the minimum uh, target time that is one minute and thirty seconds. And I will show the red card when when speaker hit the maximum time that is two minutes. There is also grace period of thirty. Thanks and back to you. Okay. Thank you, Toastmaster Danish. So are you ready? Who wants to, or rather, who wishes to volunteer first? If you raise your hand, I'll be able to pick. Otherwise, I will have to take names. Oh, that's so nice of you. Tosmasa Jagmohan. So let me start with the theme first. Our theme is the master procrastinator, right? Procrast procrastination is the theme. So let me ask you first question. How do you see procrastination and laziness? What is the difference in between? What is procrastination and what is laziness? If I have to deliver a speech of 10 minutes on Saturday and I still wait for Friday to prepare for it, is it my procrastination or is it my laziness? How do you see that? Procrastination is knowingly keeping something in your mind, giving it some space. You're constantly thinking about it but you don't want to do it because maybe you are having a different set of priorities. So both ways you can look at it. Laziness is something that you know that you want to do something. You have to do something, but you don't feel like doing it. Your body is not capably enabling you to do that activity. But when it comes to procrastination, you're very much through, you're clear, you're keeping some space in your mind, but you just that you're not able to prioritize it in your work. So I see procrastination as uh, a thing that we are not able to prioritize. We have different priorities, day-to-day -day work, and it's just that this one is not hitting the topmost priority limit in my queue. Same goes when uh, I have to prepare for a speech. Generally, I am quite occupied. I work till late night, till 3 a.m. My shift starts at 4 p.m. and I work, work at 3 a.m. And when I have to prepare for a speech, sometimes I have given speeches impromptu. 
because there was no time for me to prepare for those topics and speeches in detail. So uh, it depends. Finally, again, how you're handling your procrastination issue is all up to you. If it is something so critical that the life and death situation is there, then uh, maybe you should avoid and prioritize that first. And as in when we keep growing and we learn how to prioritize our things day to day, I think procrastination takes a, big, a back seat. And we know that why am I doing something? And that makes all the difference. Over to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to sponsor Jack Burn to have that. See, there is a saying, work tends to expand to meet the time limit given. Right. This is a saying. And uh, yes, you're right that uh, laziness is in nature. While procrastination is a bit deliberate act. Deliberately we do it. So, uh, now with the theme topic over, let me come to another topics. Who wish to volunteer that? Okay, Prasmas uh, Before my final question comes, there are few questions who have, who has one word answer only, right? Then, my, then I'll put my final questions. Which is the fastest animal? Okay, uh, fastest animal, I believe. <laughs> so it's for me only or everyone can participate? Okay, everyone can. Cheetah. Cheetah. Can. Uh, uh, cheetah. Leopard. Okay, cheetah, cheetah. Cheetah is the right answer. Which is the biggest or heaviest animal? Anyone? Elephant. Which is the which is the animal which to have the most strength or strongest animal? Strongest Jaguar. Yeah, maybe a rhino? Yeah. Yeah. Rhinos, the yeah. Rhino? Yeah. Okay, which is which is considered as uh, the wisest animal? We as human beings. Oh, dear. Oh, yes, yes. Human being is the most intelligent animal. But let us talk about the uh, the forest kind of animals. Then it's mouse good. deer. Fox. Is it a fox? Dolphin. Mouse deer. Okay. Okay. Now, Sinjari, the question comes to you. Which animal is considered to be as king of the forest? Lion, right? Okay. Lion. Yeah. Why? Okay. Let, let you answer one more question. Uh, your video is paused, Tim Ashok. Correct. I think some network glitch. Okay. Which is the tallest animal? A giraffe. Giraffe. Okay. So you said lion is the king of the forest, right? Yeah. My question to you is for table. Uh, Tim Ashok, your video is paused again, I believe. Hello, Tim Ashok. Uh, could you please come up? I couldn't hear you earlier. Okay, okay. I said, I said, when lion is not the wisest, not the tallest, not the biggest, not the heaviest, right? Mm -hmm. Why lion is uh, the king of the forest? Why it is considered to be a king of the forest? What makes a lion to be a king? This is the question. Okay, okay. I get it. So in king, uh, in animal kingdom, we all know that lion is the king of the forest, and uh, he is the king of the forest for justified reasons because we know that he is the strongest one. Every every other animal is uh, afraid of him in the forest, but again, he does not really go uh, go behind every animal and uh, make them timid about him. He is very wise. He knows that when and how. To make someone afraid of him, he knows that he knows his power. He knows that he is not the uh, wisest one. He is not the tallest one. He knows his weakness, and still he takes it very uh, strongly. He focuses on his strong points instead of focusing on his weakness, and he only goes after any animal when he obviously needs to eat something, or otherwise someone is uh, messing around with him. And at the same time, because he is the strongest one. The other animals are afraid of him, but again, they know that um, 
he is like the father of the jungle. He is like the one who is going to be there to protect them if any other uh, animal is coming from any other forest. And that is why I believe the leading power of him makes him the king of the jungle. Because first thing is that he know how to lead himself. And the second thing is that he need, know how to lead his tribe as well. So I would like to know your uh, thought on it, uh, Tiam Ashok. What do you think? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Tosma Sinchari. You are quite right. But to me, the, the lion has the winning attitude. The attitude which makes a lion a king. It behaves like a winner, right? Lion behaves like a winner. See how, how, how a lion walks. He never cares of anything. That, that is the winning walk. He is a winner. And he knows that he can do it. If he wants to do it, he can do it. So to me, all you Toastmasters are also winners. You are king. With me, all of you are request. You say, you unmute yourself and say, I can do it. I am a winner. I am a winner. I am a winner. I am the winner. Okay. Thank you so much. Let me, let me have uh, one another top, one more topic. Then I will ask permission from the TMOD if the time permits. Next question. Who wants to take it? In one of you? Oh, yes. Uh, Trishan. Trishan. Nice to see you there. Uh, all, all your enthusiasm is quite perceptible. No? I, I praise that. Have you uh, ever come across a situation when you said that if you have too much of workload, if you have too much of workload and you say, oh God, so much of work I have to do. And I have only two hands. How would I do it with two hands only? Has it happened? It has happened many times. Sir. Okay, now, now the God is very kind. God is very kind. He has listened to your prayers. And today, tomorrow morning, when you will wake up, you will find yourself with two extra hands. You will find yourself with two extra hands. What would be your first reaction and would you be happy? A superpower is something which gives you an extra ability, an edge over others. Having two extra hands is a kind of superpower, which, which if I am entitled, I will utilize. I will be, first of all, I will be surprised. But my second reaction, apart from, apart from being, uh, apart from a, sense of good surprise is that I will be happy about it because my capabilities will increase by at least by twice or thrice than my existing capabilities. If you have four hands, just like Lord Vishnu, you can use them in the best possible. You can use them to do multiple things at the same time. There are multiple things which keeps on going on in a mind of a person, particularly when he's stressed or we, when he is in any problem, he is a sing, He is a simple human being. He is a he is a person who can focus only on one task at one time. But then, if you have four hands, you can uh, you can use those four hands to, if not do multiple tasks, at least do the same tasks with a great efficiency and within a short, short stipulated time. Having multiple hands will also help me work on my uh, work on the social aspects maybe i'll use those four hands to uh, to help people in a much more better way i'll use those four hands in the best possible way maybe uh, if possible i can use them to to play to become to become a better player to uh, to enhance my capabilities for exercising because i am i am if not obese i am an, an overweight person those four hands will increase my capabilities definitely. If I have four hands, definitely I will use them in the best possible way to enhance my capabilities, to help the people around me and create a positive vibe around me in such a way that people get attracted by me and they they also benefit out of this superpower. I will uh, uh, do good for yourself and as well as for the man. The whole world is a family. What do you think about it, Toastmaster Ashu? 
so nice of you very well explained so that will definitely increase the ca your capability of working now let me let me ask the same thing with other only only one one uh, sentence answer i need one sentence answer what would be the first reaction when you see four ants in the morning what would be the first reaction wow i will say omg omg what happened to me oh, yeah. ah, no oh my god i have to change all my clothes all the all my clothes i have to exactly yeah exactly go shopping how, again. how do i wear my shirt or t-shirt now i got three wardrobe <laughs> yes yes and and the second part is only i have this or my wife or my kids or my parent also have this force <laughs> okay fine nice talking to you all Uh, may I have one more uh, topic, Timothy? A timer? Yes, we are going short on time, but we can take another one. Okay, fine. Thank you. Who wishes? Who wishes to take that? Raj. Okay, my favorite Raj. He is my mentor too. I respect him a lot. He has been helping me uh, since one year, and because of him only, I am here today. And whatever I am, it is because of him. Because I meant you to him. He is my mentor. So Raj, the final question of today's table topic comes to you. When, or maybe say tomorrow morning, when you wake up, you find yourself in front of Mount Everest. You find yourself in front of Mount Everest. How do you take it, and what would would be your emotions? Great, thank you so much, Ashok. Oh my God, I am in front of Mount Everest, my dream, but I feel so far that it will never be possible practically. But as Ashok said, that I am in front of Mount Everest, so I believe I am there. When I read uh, about those two person. Tenjing Hilary and uh, Admin, sorry, Admin Hilary and Tenjing probably, yeah, mm. that they were the very first two who conquered at Mount Everest. I had thought, is it something very impossible task which someone has done, and so many, uh, so many uh, publicity is happening of those person. I can do, no, never, but if I would be there. as in front of the mountain i will definitely make an attempt it can be for some height where i can reach definitely i believe my health may also not support to reach at that height but i will definitely make an attempt whether it is just a mount mount everest but believe or imagine that it is something else like big task in front of you it feels like it is a mount everest of task which you have to accomplish but uh, you feel it is not possible but making an attempt making an attempt that we can do it making that belief in yourself that we can conquer that task we can achieve the goal which has come up in front of me although unexpectedly because of a so grace but we have to achieve thank you i loved uh, to attempt this one thank you so much so back to you thank you raj thank you raj literally in fact any problem which we find uh, difficult facing in our life it appears to us as a mount everest is it not the only way to get rid of a problem is to face it right so we have to believe in ourselves that we can do it we will go through it and this too shall pass away so with this uh, i end this uh, table topic discussion i enjoyed talking uh, to all of you a lot a perceptible enthusiasm from all of you and with this i thank the cnd and my friends from tcs granada tcs maitri grenadiers club first time i am meeting you hope to meet you again in some time in some other meeting thank you so much
uh, in advance, I wish all of you a very uh, happy, uh, healthy, and prosperous New Year 2023. Thank you. It's over to you, uh, Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Sanchari. Thank you. Thank you, Team Ashok. Keep the uh, round of applause going for our uh, wonderful TTM of the Day, Team Ashok. It was a great selection of topics. We all enjoyed it. And now, coming back to the theme, I would like to take you to further slides. Just give me a moment, I'm sharing. All right. Uh, is my screen visible? Okay. So when it is coming to overcoming procrastination, we can go through a simple guideline because sometimes it can be really difficult for us to choose what really to do and what really to avoid. We can just keep simple uh, points on in our mind. We need to change our thoughts. We need to engage in exercises because when you exercise, it uh, clears your mind and you get the new uh, ability to think about what is really your priority. You need to practice solitude at times because when you're in solitude, you can reflect on your thoughts and meditation is obviously a great solution for overcoming procrastination because when you meditate, you focus on your life and you focus on the work in hand. Now, obviously, we should not criticize ourselves because, because criticism will not take us anywhere. We should not anticipate catastrophe. We should not um, create any reason which will let us procrastinate. We should focus on, we should not focus on things left undone. Instead, we should focus on the things that is in our hand and that we can work on. Now, there is some effective ways to deal with procrastination. Here I have included four effective ways. The first of is intrinsic motivation. We need to have a proper motivation. Sometimes it can happen with us that either we are very high on motivation or sometimes we are very low on motivation. Instead of that, we need to focus on a proper motivation, which will help us to understand what do we want to do. One to three count method, the second one. Here, we need to count to three and go do whatever it is that we are procrastinating about. I know it's easier to say than to do it, but at the same time with practice, we can really overcome the procrastination habit with this method. The next thing is the bracelet method. Obviously, we don't all have a bracelet, but at the same time, we can consider any um, anything that is going to be with us and we can snap it every time we think about procrastinating. For example, if we are getting a pro uh, procrastination thought, we might just uh, take a glass of water and we might just think that, okay, instead of procrastination, maybe I would just work on this task. Then there is the fourth one, which is a one minute method. So if you're procrastinating about something which might take a long time, you might just start with a minute in your hand and you work on this task that you are procrastinating for as little as one minute. You just need to start it. And maybe if you are liking it, you will just continue it on, your, on its own. Now, how we are going to beat procrastination and what are the advantages? This we are going to talk about later, but before that, I would like to ask our general evaluator for the day, for the evaluation section. Before that, I would like to request our timer for the timing report of the prepared speech section, and then we can continue with the general evaluation. Can we have the timing for the prepared speech section? Toastmaster Danish, you're on mute. Sorry for that. So Toastmaster Manoj took seven minutes and 50 seconds and Toastmaster Pradeep took nine minutes and 15 seconds. So both are unqualified for the voting, disqualified. All right, although it was a great uh, speech from both of them, but it is really um, unfortunate that they are not qualified for the prepared speech section. I would like to now call uh, our general evaluator for the day. TM Ravinder to take over the podium. TM Ravinder, the podium is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Sinchari. So, uh, Toastmaster, now comes the time of evaluation. So, without taking much time, let's start with the first evaluation. Let me invite Toastmaster Sagar to give, share the evaluation of the Toastmaster Pradeep Shetty. Over to you, Toastmaster Sagar. A mentor is someone who believed in us when we ourselves did not. 
saw the potential in us and helped us reach our goal without losing ourselves along the process. A very good evening, my fellow Toastmasters, guest, Madam General Evaluator, and our speaker for the day, Toastmaster Pradeep in particular. So Toastmaster Pradeep, first of all, what intrigued me in your speech is your speech title, Igniting Lamps. Obviously, when you hear the title, it, it invokes a curiosity within you about what sort of story am I expecting as an audience? And you definitely justified that throughout your content of your speech. Second thing I loved in your speech was the structure of your entire speech. First, you started off with talking about uh, how you met your mentor and then personal story of, with your mentor and how he helped you along the journey. And then at the conclusion, you also shared his teachings that you still carry with you and apply in your daily life. The third, the third thing that I loved is definitely the personal story. And I saw that the audience were, were more interested when you started off with that. Like, so people definitely loved to see uh, when you were talking about a personal connection, when you talked about how, how your mentor Solomon, Sir Solomon helped you and guided you throughout your journey, helped you become a better person and how his demise affected you, but still you carry his teachings with you. So that entire story definitely touched my heart, I can say. And at the end, what I loved is the conclusion of it. Not only you shared how he meant for you, you also shared his teachings. For example, the three, the three things that you shared with us. First, you are going places, which he told you, work on yourself and you are changing my life. Obviously, it's I can I can I can relate that your mentor saying such a big thing to you will definitely move you. Uh, but aside from that, there are a few things definitely I want you to work on in your future speeches. First of all, when you started the speech, I felt that you are moving and back and forth constantly. So maybe you can utilize your space uh, uh, like according to your content. Second thing is that I felt humor would have been effective in some places. For example, when you talked about meeting at a CCD, you said that I, I traveled a few um, kilometers uh, uh, to reach the place, but it was just a few steps from his home. So you could have uh, used that in a humorous way. Like you, you might be thinking why I was going a few, kilo, kilo, a few kilometers. But the answer is simple. It was just a few steps from his house. Oh my God, that lazy man. So you could have, you know, uh, have some sort of humor so that audience would be interested. The third thing is that I still don't know why you call Solomon. So you might be, uh, might have mentioned it at the end with why you are calling him Solomon, maybe highlight that portion a bit. But uh, to summarize, you are, you, you have an interesting title. You had a good structure, personal story and conclusion. If you can limit your movement while giving the speech, in, incorporate humor here and there, and highlight why you call him Solomon, maybe your speech would be much more impactful for me as an audience. All the best for your future speeches and back to our general evaluator. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Sagar, for this wonderful and detailed evaluation. So after the evaluation of the first speaker, be ready to learn more from our second evaluator who is going to evaluate the second speaker, Toastmaster Manoj. Sometimes the only person that understands you is yourself. Talking about emotions, there are so many things that we want to understand about ourselves and how this impacts others. So good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests, and hello to Toastmaster Manoj in particular. Right from the title of the speech, Ubuntu, that's the concept that you brought in with the title of the speech, kept me hooked because I wanted to understand that how you are relating Ubuntu with emotional intelligence. There were several powerful messages throughout the speech. So I would say the content was well incorporated with the messages. Messages like emotions are universal language, ease for energy and motion to it. When you give it, then it turns out to be something. Apart from this, do you uh, uh, included the concept for yin and yang, comparing it with men and women energy? Then emotions are energy, given the emotions. Then you added a personal story, which made it so unique for us to understand and to be able to relate something. And I thank you for sharing this. 
now as an evaluator uh, i follow this ubuntu concept i am because you are so as an evaluator i would like to suggest some few improvements that would take this uh, speech to a very high level when you started the frame was not showing your complete picture some of the hand gestures were there but these were actually powerful hand gestures which we could not see so setting up the camera position correctly would have helped drastically second thing i feel that in the content there were overlapping things related to thoughts behavior and emotions so something was incorporated as a emotion while we were talking about behavior for example when you said i never took a pause to understand when you are understanding something you are trying to understand the person you are not just talking about emotions when we say emotions emotions are actually the temporary state of mind emotions keep changing but behavioral is something permanent it does not normally change so a bifurcation in the content would have helped understand uh, the concept much a better way uh then in the uh, delivery part i would want to say that local uh, vocal uh, variety could have made it more impactful so going by the same example i never took a pause you in tried incorporating but if you added the vocal variety along with the emotion that you were showing it would have been very very impactful like i never took a pause to understand what was going through what was happening so this would have done a fantastic job for you so overall i would say you had a very fantastic speech there were several messages but if you could clarity clearly bring this bifurcation between behavior emotion that we are talking about and work on vocal variety and the emotional behavior that would have been an exemplary speech so i wish you all the best for all your future speeches and look forward to uh, hear more from you thank you thank you toastmaster jagmohan for this detailed evaluation so after the evaluation section let's move to the other uh, let's welcome toastmaster danish for the uh, timer report over to you toastmaster danish thank you general evaluator so as i told earlier so toastmaster manoj and toastmaster pratipa both are disqualified for voting regarding the table topic speaker uh, report so toastmaster jagmohan as a table topic speaker took 1 minute and 35 seconds toastmaster sanjari took 1 minute and 23 seconds and toastmaster trishak took 2 minutes and 3 uh, 3 seconds and toastmaster raj took 1 minute and 50, 53 seconds so all, all the table topic speaker qualified for the voting regarding the evaluator so toastmaster sagar took 3 minutes and 27 seconds while toastmaster jagmohan took 3 minutes and 40 seconds So both are both the evaluators are qualified for voting. Thanks and thank you, Toastmaster Danish, for the uh, detailed report. So now come to the Toastmaster Imran. Kindly present your report. Thank you so much, General Evaluator. Toastmaster Jagmohan used pillar word a uh, six times. Toastmaster Shantari used pillar word a uh, seven times. Toastmaster Sagar used pillar word a uh, two times and repeat words I can one times. Then Toastmaster Podi used pillar word a uh, two times and one pillar word which is I I. Toastmaster Danish Shoma used two uh, uh, pillar word a uh, two times. Toastmaster Ashok used pillar word a uh, five times, and Toastmaster Prishank Sharma used one time pillar word a, uh, and one repeat word I am I am. Toastmaster Ras used uh, pillar word a uh, three times, and now I would like to give some tips to, that will help you to reduce uh, reduce pillar word first. do short pauses while you are speaking and you can speak a little bit slowly so that audience can uh, understand everything and it will help you to filler your uh, eliminate your filler word and number 2 be self aware while you are talking 
If you are self-aware, you can avoid filler word. Number three, practice, practice, practice. Practice your role, practice your speech. It will help you to eliminate your filler word. And last but not the least, record yourself and listen. It will help you to identify your uh, strength and weakness. That is all from my side. Over to you, General Ibalito. Thank you so much, Postmaster Imran, for your report. So next, uh, let's welcome Postmaster uh, Smitha as a grammarian. Kindly present your report. Russia is not coming. Sure, Madam General Evaluator. Uh, today, today's speeches obviously were too good, and we had a lot of very good usages of grammar as well as new English words. Main one being the Ubuntu, the word Ubuntu. There were words like edifies, ingenious, uh, phrases like you are going to go places, gives an edge over others, etc. In addition to that, uh, I have noted a few uh, usages which could have been corrected, like has to do could have been had to do, conquered at could have been just conquered relate that uh, could have been modified to relate to that. Also, the word of the day was used uh, a total of five times. Uh, Toastmaster Pradeep used it twice. Toastmaster Manoj used it once. And Toastmaster Ashok used it twice. With that, I hand it over back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Smita, for your report. So, after the evaluation of timers as well as the grammarians, all the reports, let's come to the my evaluation for today's meeting. So, are you ready for that? <laughs> so, evaluation is the breakfast of every champion. So, I think I must say I'm sorry I'm delivering it at the dinner time. So, sorry for that. <laughs> So starting with the Toastmaster Jagmohan, as he is the sergeant at arms of today's meeting, kudos to you as you have taken two roles, sergeant at arms as well as the evaluator for one speaker. You have started meeting by uh, late, but it was not your mistake. And we know uh, there was a uh, few speaker was absent there, but the way you described the three roles was beautiful. Secondly, you gave the detailed evaluation as an evaluator to the second speaker. I hope it will help a lot to all, not only the speaker, but to all. The one thing I have missed in your Sergeant at Arm role is we usually reiterate the club missions and you miss that. So kindly keep it in the noted. And uh, second, I would call Toastmaster Raj being the president for the day, for today's meeting. You are approached to welcome the guest as well as all the Toastmasters and the future Toastmasters was beautiful. I am impressed by your approach, especially our would-be Toastmaster of 2023, Estera. So uh, after Raj, next come to the Toastmaster Danish. You are alert throughout your meeting. Even you kept the minutest detail as well as the timing for the meeting for everyone, the speaker, the table topic speaker, as well as the evaluator. Very well done to keep the record of all the speakers. And after the Danish, let's come to the Toastmaster Imran, our R counter. Your reports will help us a lot as you have noticed everything, how many people have used the same double clutches as well as the fillers. So kindly, I advise everyone to kindly keep in mind that don't use these words again in the future meeting so that we can improve. We all are here to improve ourselves. So after Imran, let's come to the Toastmaster Samita. So Toastmaster Samita, she, uh, she, uh, you are the grammarian as well as the listening master of the day. You focused on every speaker. Let's see 
what you have done and that we will see in the end of the meeting <clears throat> the one thing i have missed that you never noticed but i have used the word perceptible in my introduction <laughs> I am so sorry. Maybe I missed it. No worry. I am just evaluating the meeting. <laughs> so after Toastmaster Samita, let's come to the Toastmaster Sanchari, the Toastmaster of the day. Toastmaster uh, Sanchari, you performed very well by introducing the theme of the meeting, the master procrastinator, and also explain it beautifully. And the most important, you explain the three sections of our meeting that will benefit the guest they, so that they can experience the meeting. Most importantly, one thing I have noticed is how you manage the time when the one speaker was not there. So you invited the second evaluator to call upon the second speaker. So next come to the Toastmaster Pradeep as well as the Toastmaster Manoj, both the prepared teacher, uh, speaker. Uh, congratulations for completing your pathway, respective pathway. No need to worry if you are ineligible for the contest. You are already winner. You are already winner. So regarding the Toastma table topic master, uh, Toastmaster Ashok Gokhale, you performed, you conducted table topics wonderfully as the topics you have selected were theme-based regarding the procrastination. So it was well and you invited the guest as well. Due, even due to that time limit, you invited everyone. And the one thing I uh, observed is the technical glitches are always there in that online meetings, but we should keep it in the notice for the future meeting. Then next come to the evaluation, the two evaluator. I have already announced about the Jagmohan, Toastmaster Jagmohan, but now come to the Toastmaster Sagar. He evaluated the speech of uh, Pradeep. It was wonderful. How the adding humor was, is going to help us. And that is the new, new thing I have observed. So thank you, both the evaluator, as you are going to help us in the future. You both give the evaluation with the personal note. So once again, Jagmoon for taking Toastmaster Jagmoon for taking the two roles as an evaluator as a uh, sa. So Toastmaster Manoj, I think I have covered this here, him. So overall, the meeting was amazing and mind blowing. Now, uh, I must say thank you everyone for joining and performing well in this meeting, and thank you all the role player speakers, table topic speakers. And a special thanks to all the guests who have joined for the first time and are interested or are thinking to join the Toastmaster International. You are always welcome. That's all from my side. And one thing more, I would say we need to learn the time management skill as well as the speaking skill. Uh, uh, before uh, handing over the stage to the Toastmaster of the day, I will request to everyone kindly vote mm. for the ta best table topic speaker, best role player. Best player. Now I will hand over the stage to the TMOD for the further proceeding. So over to you, Toastmaster of the day, TM Sinchar. Thank you, Team Raminder. A big round of applause for this wonderful uh, evaluation. I just like to know that uh, is there any evaluation for the table topic section, the table topic speaker? Yes. Uh, did I miss it? I'm sorry. I kindly check the link in the chat. No, no, no. I'm saying about the uh, evaluation for the table topic section, the table topic speakers. Uh, the the poll on the screen for yeah, the best table topic. Fine. We can go through the polls. I would like to request everyone for uh, giving the vote in the poll and we can go back to our theme. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, TM Raminder. Please keep, uh, please keep going on the big round of applause for TM Raminder. All right. With this, we are at the very end of our uh, theme for today. And now I'd like to share my screen again.
Okay, is my screen uh, visible? Yes. Yeah. So now I'd like to uh, talk about the advantages of beating pro procrastination, how we can turn procrastination into productivity and how it is going to help us in the long, long run. We can avoid the anxiety when we are going to uh, take chunks of the work in hand and we are going to do it, we are going to avoid the anxiety and we are going to feel that we are being productive. Uh, we will get time for more enjoyable things. As Tim Jagmohan said us that if we are prioritizing our task in hand, we will realize that we have more time in our hand which we can implement for enjoying the things uh, which we really would like to do. We can feel strong and confident. The more you will work on the uh, priorities, the more it will give uh, accomplishment and the more you will feel you are accomplished and you are strong and you are confident in doing what you really want to do. We can experience personal freedom because the more you are going to be um, in your way to achieving um, goals in your life, the more you are, it will come with personal freedom. Now I would like to uh, take you through some insights that I get from the tape talk that I was sharing earlier. Because of the time constraint, obviously I would not be able to uh, show you the tape talk again, but I would definitely like to request you all to go through it. It's a very funny one. At the same time, it's a very inspiring one. Uh, two things that I learned from that particular TED talk is that first thing, when we are procrastinating, it's not necessarily uh, an unrequired procrastination. Sometimes it can happen that we are constantly thinking about the task in our mind, but we are not working on it. But uh, it happens with me a lot, lot. Maybe I am going to prepare a speech and I'm preparing it at the very end. But constantly for two weeks before the speech, I am uh, going through the what I'm going to say, what I'm going to write, how I'm going to practice in my mind only. I'm not writing it, but in my mind, I'm continuously thinking about it. So if it is procrastination like this, where you have it in your mind, you are preparing it in your mind, but you are not really put it in your paper, then sometimes it can be helpful as well. And uh, obviously it comes with the anxiety, but it has its own parts as well. You can uh, learn a lot in that phase. The second thing that I learned from this procrastination is that, uh, from this video is that, in life, we go across two kinds of procrastination. One procrastination when there is a deadline, and one procrastination when there is no deadline. For example, when we are procrastinating for a speech, for an exam, uh, for an upcoming event, we do have a deadline. We know that either today or tomorrow, or maybe two weeks later, we need to work on it. But then there comes some situation in life, maybe you are in an unhappy job, maybe you are in an unhappy relationship, maybe you are in um, going through some space which doesn't have a deadline, and you don't really know how to work on it, how to overcome the situation because you don't have a deadline. You are taking life and uh, you, are, you are thinking that life is long and you can overcome it at any point of time. And that is the procrastination that we should work on. The procrastination when there is no deadline and when you are not really sure when you are going to start working on it. I believe that we all go through it. We all have some goals in our life without any deadline where we can really focus and make it our priority and we can excel in that. But because we don't really get a push, we don't really work on it. So I'd like to urge you all of urge all of you that you should uh, focus on the goal as well, which is there without a deadline. And without doing further procrastination, you might start working on it. And maybe at the same time, it will give you the productivity boost that you need in your life to gain the personal freedom, to gain the personal time for really doing the things that uh, inspire you. That's all from my side. Now I'd like to hand over the podium to TM Smita at first for the listening master section. Uh, TM Smita, would you like to take up that? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. sorry, Dr. Uh, Ravindra, I believe you would like to call her, but I called her already. And uh, thank you. Thank you, TM Smita. You can take over. OK. Uh, I'm sure you all have heard all the speeches. I have very little questions. Let's see how many of you have listened carefully. So to start with, uh, Toastmaster Sanchari had played a video. Uh, it was from TED Talks. Can anybody remember the speaker's name? Hmm. Yes, Toastmaster. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Tim Arbor. Tim Arbor. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's the right answer. Uh, in Toastmaster Pradeep's speech, he said, uh, 
he met a great personality and he mentioned a year when he met him does anyone know which year did he meet him first 2019 yeah Looks like everyone was listening <laughs> yeah. okay next question in toastmaster manoj's speech uh, how many years back he said he got married no one is toastmaster manoj there yeah toastmaster manoj 25 years 25 years yes he also okay uh, next question is from uh, is about our general evaluator madam ravinder kaur how many books has she written three 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 yeah that's the What's right the answer title? title no one mentioned so even we are not aware <laughs> Yes, I would like to know the titles as well. Yes, uh, yes. Yes, Tosh Master Ravinder Kaur. If you no worry, I will share in the chat. Uh, I will yeah. share in the group. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more question from Tosh Master Pradeep speech. He mentioned that uh, he met this person regularly at one place. Some cafe. It was. Is it? CCD no. yes uh, no CCD okay. was close by to that place but it was a different place Marshall sure. Bangalore no one yeah it was Bangalore I believe uh, it was the global village it had a coffee day global out, village. Uh, opposite okay. to that yeah then how frequently were they meeting weekly mm, not exactly weekly uh once in two weeks something like that yeah once in two to three weeks that's right sanjay this must be sanjay i think that's all i have we can uh, go ahead back to you toastmaster sanjay thank you teams with the for this wonderful uh, listening master section we all enjoyed it and now i'd like to, like to call upon um, our general evaluator for the day tm ravinder uh, i'm sorry <laughs> the selection section is already done so i'd like to hand over the podium again to our president for the day uh, tm raj thank you so much sanchari i would like to uh, invite trishank right uh, toastmaster jagmohan yes trishank yeah. sharma sure sure over to you uh, toastmaster trishank for closing remarks thank you so much uh, to tm raj uh, i am uh, truly honored by uh, your gesture so uh, this uh, joint session of uh, grandier toast masters club and uh, the other club uh, clearly it, it was an amazing session we really i hope uh, we enjoyed a lot so i would like to call upon the guests uh, for today for the feedback uh, tm estera uh, sorry uh, estera oh right there. yeah uh right. thank you trisha it's great meeting um um you guys from the what may tree is it may tree yeah i find every one of you are very pleasant a great topic today and we are looking forward to uh, have a joint meeting again in future thank you it's great uh, thank you so much uh, we do hope that uh, you join our join the toastmasters family very soon and we do hope that you become a part of it uh, there's one more uh, guest for today uh, ashutosh is he there no i guess he's left so okay now uh, we'll move forward to the award section for today so uh, going forward the best role player in category 1 which comprises of the tmod the uh, table topic master and the general evaluator it goes to a table topic master for today toast master ashok a huge round of applause the best role player category 2 which comprises of the president the sergeant in terms 
the timer, the, uh, the arc counter, the grammarian, as well as the listening master. It goes to a president of, uh, the, uh, of the chalk and dusters, Toastmasters Club, Toastmaster Raj. Uh, the most improved speaker, it goes to Toastmaster Sanchari as the TMOD. The best table topic speaker for today, it goes to Toastmaster Jagmohan. Uh, as uh, the speakers shot, uh, they got disqualified on account of time. So there's no uh, best speaker for today. And the, yeah, that's it. So the awards are uh, done. And Vishank, you okay. missed the evaluator. <laughs> Do we have for evaluator? No. I think Raj conducted for evaluation. The poll okay. based for evaluation. Uh, okay, okay, let me announce. Let me announce yeah. it is. Uh, okay, just let me check once. <laughs> uh, it is. Okay, yeah. It is Toastmaster Jagmohan with 66% and uh, Sagar with 33%. Okay, so the yeah, best evaluator. I'm sorry. Uh, it's Toastmaster Jagmohan. I didn't have it, so I didn't announce that. So uh, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for this joint session. We uh, we do hope that we have multiple sessions like this, and we get to know our, the Toastmasters family, uh, the other Toastmasters of the other clubs as well. We do hope that uh, we do conduct these sessions also in future, and we do hope that all of us join. So uh, I declare the end of this meeting. Uh, over to you. Now the forum is over. It was open for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Raj, you may stop recording. <laughs>